Second lesson, James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17. What doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he had faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it ought not works, is dead, being alone. Spiritual chorus Faith without work is dead. Faith without work is dead. Love is the root to salvation. Beloved, having heard that spiritual chorus, faith without work is dead, do you not know that hating your fellow man and not doing good works profit you nothing? Without love, you have no root, and all your works are meaningless. Love is patient and kind. This, it is neither arrogant nor boastful. I am sure that you remember the question the worldly people ask. What does that man give to you? In your ignorance, you tell them you are, you are giving nothing? No. I am asking, has love not been given to you? You may go to somebody's house and by the way you have you are received, when even if food is offered to you, you will reject that food. This is so because there is no love. Such food will not be palatable because there is not even an iota of love in the person's behavior you will not even want to eat that food or you may just taste it and claim you are satisfied you may equally pay a visit to somebody who welcomes you very well with expressions of love and you find out that even if you are given food or, or not in as much as there is that love you will not be satisfied because you have seen exactly what you have been looking for, which is love. Therefore, there is nothing to compare to love. Love is God and God is love and they work tremendously. When you are told to walk in spirit, it is love that you have to use as an instrument when you walk in spirit, you will see all the virtues of God manifesting. The scripture says clearly that these people worship me with their lips, but their character does not portray it. Therefore, one may claim to love you, but in spirit is plotting all sorts of evil against you. True love is true love is evidenced by the person who loves you even in spirit and can give you all that you want, namely peace, endurance, mercy, joy, and other heavenly virtues. Lust does not have the spirit of God. God is spirit and if you do not have the spirit of God you are lacking in love. This is the main reason why everybody must be in spirit so as to acquire love and be able to express it. I have told you that when you have this love which is the Holy Spirit you shall have no problem wherever you may be. Even if you are in America or any part of the world, this love will still abide with you and never depart from you. It is in view of this that our Lord Jesus Christ said, It is expedient that I go 
away so that the promised comforter shall come and lead you to the accurate knowledge of truth here whatever we do the comforter is in our midst to control and direct us he pilots our affairs and caters for our needs therefore you can see clearly that this concept of love has nothing to do with mundane things for god is love a local adage has it that whatever a poor man has that will he hand over to his child so it is with what peter james and john did at the beautiful gate when they came over to the beautiful gate the beggar demanded arms from them in reply peter told the crippled beggar thus silver and gold of i none but in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk instantaneously this man stood up and started walking from here you can see how the heavenly virtues work more than mundane things even if the man was given more than 20,000 Naira, it would have, it would not have healed him, but what they had was what they transferred onto the man. That is why I keep telling you to be fully aware of what is in your mission in this kingdom. You have to desist from the things of this world the love of money, of wealth, of fleet of cars, of women, of men, and other mundane things should be a taboo in your life. Love is the order of the day and as such, you have to embrace love and exhibit its qualities to all and sundry. Beloved, if love had not been in existence even before the foundation of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ would not have posed this question to Peter. Do you love me more than any other thing? If Peter had replied negatively, our Lord Jesus Christ would not have entrusted the sheep of God to his care. But since his reply was, I love you more than any other thing. Our Lord Jesus Christ decided to surrender the sheep of God to his care. Love is a stage of steadfastness in God's service. Brethren, many here in this kingdom are boastful of the Father, but for the past, for the past years, their feet have not stepped into those premises where then is your faith <coughs> excuse me when you do not come here why claim and shout oh my father and all what not your claim is empty and hold no water it's all claims and no love and it avails you nothing i've already told you that if peter did not have love the sheep would not have been entrusted in his care therefore when you go about chatting oh holy father and wonderful when you go about claiming and chanting oh Holy Father and Wonderful Father, it means nothing without love. The Holy Spirit directs everything you do. God loves all those who love Him. And this has nothing to do with wealth or material possession. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Whoever loves me shall keep my commandments. No that you are making claims here and there that you love the father have you been able to keep his commandments 
All those who love the Father keep the Father's commandment and wherever they go they are recognized as people who love and honor the Father because it is through their deeds that they are known, not by words. What our Lord Jesus Christ used while here on earth was nothing but love, which he had for mankind. Since he did not want the world to perish, he volunteered to come and die for the remittance of the sins of the world. The world disgraced ridiculed, mocked, and humiliated him, and nailed him to the cross. Yet he prayed to the Father to forgive them, for they know not what they did. These are true qualities of love, and it does not harm its neighbor. For humanity's sake, our Lord Jesus Christ suffered tremendously, and yet, still, None is ready to abide by his injunction. Rather, the world is trying to crucify him again. I show you love by preaching the gospel to you every day. But instead of coming to listen to the teachings, you remain in your houses. The question is, are you practicing the word of God in your house? Your attitude towards the word of God is not encouraging at all. If you were outside Calabar or even Nigeria, you would have a little excuse. But people even come from America and other parts of the world to this place to worship the Father. Majority claim that if they were to be in existence during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, they would have followed him wherever he went. The puzzle now is that the Father is here. But we cannot find time. What have you been able to do? You do nothing other than engage yourselves in fighting, quarreling, struggling, segregating, sowing seeds of discord and other vices. Where then is the love? The problem you are facing is that you were called up by the Father into this kingdom, but you go back to your former vices. I want to let you know that since our Lord Jesus Christ called Peter, he never one day went back to fishing. Rather, he followed him because he loved the Father just like the scripture has stated love is what is to be focused upon and not seeking for money to go and pay tight and so on love is basically the belief in and obedience to the injunctions of the father many are here because they have love for the father and you can identify them through their qualities but those who have no love for the Father never come here. Our Lord Jesus Christ suffered tremendously because of our sins. He was spat on, called Beelzebub, and finally nailed on the cross. But the world refused to recognize him as the Savior of the world and indeed and heed to his injunction. They instead use the name Jesus in politics. You see them establishing churches, calling on the name of Jesus, Jesus. When you trivialize his name, do you remember his sufferings, his persecution and torments? Do you remember all that Christ went through? It is because of this kind of people who are still crucifying him that the name of God is being blasphemed. If you claim to love one another, how then do you take a fellow human being to the court or police station? Why take arms and weapons against your fellow man 
why do you not demonstrate love? You will find that if you are endowed with love, you will not engage in any ungodly act. Our Lord Jesus Christ lived an exemplary life. He did not marry, he did not eat meat or fish, neither was he involved in the high life of this earth. For man's sake, he bore persecution, abuses and tribulations in, in silence just because of the love he had for mankind. That is why I have told you that on that fateful day he thought and deemed it wise to die as an end to all sorrow and in preference to whatever Pilate offered him. If he had accepted any favors, the scripture would not have been fulfilled and his mission would have failed. You can then see that he bore all the suffering, the pain, the shame, and disgrace for our salvation, yet we take him for granted. The world has forgotten so soon his tribulations and death. They have forgotten so soon the merciless beatings, the torture and cruelty meted out to him. They instead trivialize his death and make a mockery of his suffering. Churches now abound in all nooks and corners, but instead of being used to glorify God, they are turned to commercial and political grounds for acquiring wealth. The same thing you are doing here is applicable to what is going on in other churches. You call yourself a member of brotherhood and yet you go about fornicating, hating and hating one another, stealing and engaging in vices. Does your character portray godliness? You can see then that it is because of your actions, your words and deeds that people have been blaspheming against God. This is therefore the time to repent, portray love and abide by the injunctions of the Father. If you love God, you will keep his commandment. In brotherhood, we are not interested in numbers, but in those who are able to love one another and keep God's commandment. This is the category of people that is required in this kingdom. Let us now listen to our golden text. Golden text, 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 to 21. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that, we, that he who loveth God, love his brother also. Love for man is tantamount to love for God. Beloved, you have heard our golden text, but majority gathering here, when they are queried by the worldly people why they are worshipping man, they become ashamed. It should not be so. Recall what our Lord Jesus Christ did when he called his twelve disciples and washed their feet. This showed the importance of man. Even if you are ashamed when such confrontations come to you, I am not ashamed to be your father. I appreciate you and give you love. You have to love one another and whosoever loves man loves God. That is the reason I always implore you to love man and minister unto man because whatever you do to man is done to God. 
whatever you do, whether worshiping or giving alms, you are doing it to God. Wherever, therefore, you are confronted with questions about worshiping man, be confident and firm and tell them that worshiping man is godly because God created man in his own image. God is man and man is God. And as such, I encourage you to do whatever good you can do to man because it is done unto God. God is not ashamed of us. Neither should we be ashamed of him. Just believe in him. Practice his injunction and separate yourself from evil and he will be your father and you will become his children. The scripture has it. That when you rejoice with any servant of God, you are equally rejoicing with God. You must therefore do good to all servants of God. Whether they are children or adults, you must respect them and be generous to them. For whatever you do to them is done to God. Those in the orphanage home, the aged, the oppressed, the prisoners are helpless and in need. It is your duty to go and see them, extend love to them and see what you can do for them. When you do all these good things, you may not realize it, but you are doing them to God. If you have, if you leave ministering to the needy and say you want to deal with God direct, you are a liar and wasting your time. Your take home package is the golden text and it clearly states if a man say i love god and hated his brother he is a liar for he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen how can he love god whom he hath not seen and this commandment have we from him that he who loveth god Love is brother also. The above passage stresses brotherly love. I have told you that whoever loves his fellow human loves God equally. When you come here, know that it is not a prayer ground, sacrificial ground, nor the kingdom of the world. For the kingdom of this world has become the throne of God. Therefore, we are not talking about churches or prayer houses, but the kingdom of God. We are required to live up to the expectations of the kingdom and be totally confident in the knowledge that the Father is always with you in your houses, in your offices, in the marketplaces and everywhere. Do not say, I have to go to Calabar to worship the Father because there are humans all over the world. Whatever you do to them, that is good. The same is done unto God. Seek love and express love to its fullest. Brother Paul stated that you should not build anything on any other foundation apart from that of love. You have been taught that the foundation of this kingdom is love and you have seen that whatever we do in this kingdom is based on the platform of love. There is nothing like drumming, clapping of hands alongside with songs, lighting of candles and burning of incense. There is no ceremony, no ritual and no condition set for anything other than love. The paramount requirement in this kingdom is love. Therefore you must love all mankind and all creations. For to love them is to love God. Brethren, it is advisable and profitable for you to come and hear from the Father. 
you have to come and pay homage to the father it is sad to note that you who are around here do not turn out as expected but people from Yumiala people from Lim Yohalia and other parts of the world come in here to pay homage to the Father. This is because of the love they have for the Father. I now implore you to walk circumspectly and minister to the children of God. Do not come here and pretend before me and go outside and be another thing. Whatever you do to the Father, let it be done to the fullest. This week is a wonderful week. The Universal Workers Fellowship is on top. This week will be used to identify the children of God who have love for one another. Love is personified and is in our midst and love is the order of the day among the children of God. Beloved, I do not intend to take you any further. Let those who have ears to hear, let them hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. End of quote. Peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father.